I'm Admiral Ann Cash, and this is the Paragon Archer Lecture and AMA. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please post them in the chat and tag me so that I can see them a little bit easier, uh, either in Twitch or in Discord. Um, I'll be going over form, accuracy, gear, strategies, and uh, drills. I will stop after every section for questions. And, uh, yeah, I believe that's about it. So, if we're all good to go, let's get into it. So, uh, first thing is form. Um, if anyone has ever done um, dabbing before, um, oddly enough, it helps a lot. Um, so, if you start with a dab, whoop, and then rotate it, you're in form. Isn't that nuts? Who knew? <laughs> right? So you're going to keep your, your chest nice and straight, your shooting, uh, the, the hand that is holding the bow nice, straight out. You're going to want to watch your elbow, because if, um, if it pops out, you'll get uh, swacked by the bowstring, and we call it bow bite. You'll get a giant bruise, or about four inches right there, so you want to just make sure that you're nice and rotated, so it's nice and flat. Also. Uh, using a, a guard is highly advised. Um, if you're wearing armor and things like that, it's it's uh, not quite an issue because you do have some padding there. But uh, if you are um, going with bare skin, the arm guards are really good for that. Um, in case at any point you know you slip and pop, just to not get bruising there. Um, also, wearing a glove on on your hand also uh, helps um, to not get scratched up as. Uh, as you're, uh, you're loosening your arrow, especially if, for some bows that have um, where your hand is the riser, where you're actually shooting off the hand, um, super advised wearing a glove. Um, so again, that's nice and straight. Your hand will be holding the bow, like so. Uh, you don't want to grip it, right? You don't want to have it uh, too taut. Um, nice and loose, right? You should be able to easily flex and move. Just gonna hold that right out, right? And you want this to be level, right? You don't want to be up, you don't want to be too low. Um, basically avoid tension. Um, and and the, the proper position is actually very important because you can pull muscles and uh, strain and tears and things like that. So you want to be very, very careful. Um, and then the other hand, Again, you want that to be nice and level, nice, relaxed, right? You don't want to be tense, you don't want to be too low, right? You're going to pull all of that in there. Too high, you're going to pull all of that in here, right? Nice and level. And then you're going to um, use something called an anchor. Um, I prefer to use uh, just that part of my thumb there, right? top joint and um, it, it varies um, from from person to person to where they like to put their anchor point um, I like it right here on that jawline right so that's where you're going to rest your hand as you're in your position right um, Looks like. Right, right there. Now, the reason why you use um, the anchor is that it's a lot of weight when you're pulling. Um, and it's, uh, it's hard on the muscles to keep it steady, right? So if you're out here, you see? That makes this really unstable. Your hand will shake, your arm will shake. So using that anchor point helps you to steady, right? Nice and steady. Um, so definitely always use an anchor if, if possible. Um, now for how you're holding the string itself, uh, there's a couple ways to do it. Some people prefer the two finger. Uh, I prefer the three. So it's one up, two down. Again, you're not squeezing tight, right? You're not gonna um, grip it to where you know it's not gonna 
it's not kind of loose when you let go. Um, but you also don't want it too light or else, you know, you will prematurely uh, fall off of the string <laughs> as you're shooting. So just, right, um, let's see if we can show you sort of where that lies on the fingers. Alright. So that's all the position when you're doing, you know, your shots. So again, just to repeat. And there. Nice and straight. You're watching your angle of your this part of your your uh, the inside of your arm. You're watching your hand, you're watching your other hand, uh, your anchor, and your fingering. Um, also, super advocate for uh, shooting gloves. Um, you can see that it just covers the three fingers, because those are the only ones that you're using on the string. Um, again, it's just it's easier on your fingers. Um, when you're shooting for a long period of time, uh, the, the bow string can like dig into your fingers, and that's not fun. Um, and it just gives you a little bit more control. It keeps it more steady. You have a better grip on it. Um, yeah, and then it's also right. Um, if you can see, there's extra leather on the tips. Um, again, just helping uh, not just like dig into your fingers. So um, there's also different ways to uh, do the pull itself. I prefer uh, more of the the Zen archery um, positioning to where uh, I go from up down. Um, some people prefer to go from down up. Uh, the reason why I go from um, up down is that it puts you in a more relaxed physical position, right? When you're going bottom up, right, you're raising everything. You get tense in the shoulders. If you go too far, all of a sudden you've crunched everything. You're going to get super tight. You're going to pull and strain and tear things. Um, and you do not want that. So. Uh, I prefer to go uh, up down. It goes into a nice relaxed position, right? It's like taking a, a nice good deep breath. Um, also, I find it easier to pull. Um, when when doing those forms of shooting, those are usually massive bows with a lot of poundage. So um, it's it can be physically easier to make that pull going um, from up down and again I'll, I'll show you what that looks like it's a little difficult because my bow is literally sitting on the ground right now um, we're in an apartment so this is very tight and camera so All right going from that position and down All right. again nice smooth relaxed um, are there any questions pertaining to physical positioning and posture for that shot? Any advice for shooting winter? Okay. Um, archery winter is hard. <laughs> um, it is hard to shoot when your hands get uh, very frozen, um, right? Because also, like your muscles are getting tense, you lose finger, you know, uh, you lose fingers. Oh gosh, I hope not. <laughs> if you get frostbite, you could. Warning, bad things. Um, you'll lose feeling um, in your fingers. In everything about this, you need to be able to feel it, right? Um, so what I do when I'm shooting in winter is, um, I use hand warmers. They're just little, uh, packs that you can get from, uh, like the grocery store or, um, Walmart, um, pharmacies. There's a bunch of different places you can get them. Um, obviously a little hard to get, like, this time of period, but, um, but during winter time they, they're pretty well stocked. Um. So basically, you, you tear it open, and you um, smush it, shake it, and um, you just stick it in your gloves. Uh, you can also get like a muff, right? 
um, to, to wear around your waist that you can keep your hands in whenever you're not shooting, um, especially when there's uh, pauses and holds and um, just any sort of downtime at all, you just stick your hands inside the muff, right? Um, so a muff is a, it's a, there's different materials you can use. You can use um, fur type things, you could use uh, fleece, uh, just anything that's insulating and warm and cozy. And uh, it's just uh, basically like a tube. Um, and it's about that big and it's just something enough to be able to fit your hands inside of. Um, and you can just slide it on your belt. You just wear it right in there. Um, just be careful when you are shooting, you might want to move it off to the side or the back uh, just so that it doesn't um, get popped by the string as you're shooting. Uh, that's another thing. When you're shooting, be careful of um, what you have on you because uh, any loose flying things uh, can get hit by the bowstring. So just you don't want to have anything that will affect um, the shot and um, essentially the accuracy of what happens to the arrow when you let go of it. Um, also, also, also super important for winter stuff. Um, do not keep your bow in your car. <laughs> do not leave it overnight. Do not leave your arrows in your vehicle overnight. Um, make sure that you're uh, bringing it inside, keeping it at room temperature, um, and also that you're destringing um, your bow. Don't keep it assembled like this. Um, you should be popping your string off after, um, after use, um, and that's for all year round. Um, make sure you, you're disassembling your bow, because uh, wear and tear um, is, is a thing. And, you know, you'll stretch or break your bowstring if it's, uh, if it ends up getting uh, too worn and whatnot. And you can get loose over time. Okay. Good stuff. Uh, any other questions, let me know. Please just keep them coming. Um, yeah, okay, so let's go over the release which, um, when you're actually letting go of the arrow. So we've gone over the posture, we've gone over the positioning. Um, where the arrow is sitting is very important. Um, I'm going to show you actually the other side of this. So this right here is called the um, riser. This is the part that holds your arrow. Some bows do not have risers. Your hand becomes the riser for those types of bows, right? Uh, anything like a Mongolian horse bow or an English longbow, things like that, uh, usually don't have um, the riser, this part here. Um, so you have to hold it up with, with your hand, um, which can be very tricky. So um, practice. <laughs> practice makes perfect. Um, so you want to make sure that it's resting there. You want to make sure that it's even while it's resting there. Right. This would be. Um, you want this to be totally straight as you're shooting, right? Um, if you have it at an angle, it will shoot at the angle, right? Physics, <laughs> all that fun stuff. So you want to be level when you're shooting with this so that you can choose with your hand the arc that you want to be um, positioning. So it's best to start from a neutral position. So um, when you are knocking, right, knock is, is the bit at the end, um, something that really, really helps is a knock stopper, which is this little thing here, if you can see it. It's like a little metal bead thing you clamp onto your bowstring. Basically what you do is when you're, um, when you're knocking, you can knock any point underneath and then you just slide it up, right? Sorry, wrong hand, right? And you just pop it up. So you can have it in the wrong thing and just pop it up. Consistency is everything. You want this to be consistent every time. Um, accuracy is based on muscle memory, which uh, is reliant on repetition and consistency, which we'll go over later. Um, so the positioning is extremely important. Um, now, if you'll notice, I have a, a bit of a different mod to my arrows, right? Um, the veins, which is these, um, I have four of them. Now there is a very specific reason why I have four of them. Um, I, I usually refer to them as the X-wing pattern. Um, 
because what you'll notice is that it's basically flat whoop, on two sides. Now what that means is I can do blind knocking, which means that I do not need to actually look when I'm knocking. Um, this is really, really, really useful um, in amp guard archery because you need to be keeping battlefield awareness, you need to be watching your opponents. Um, if you stop to go pick out your thing, you're going, okay, it's lining up, huh? yeah, okay. By the time you look back, your opponent's gone and they're drum rolling you in the back. <laughs> Um, so you want to be able to keep your eyes on your opponents at all times. So having an ox stopper really helps with that. Having, you know, four fletchings also helps with that. Now, if you can't have four fletchings, there's uh, something that you very much need to know about knocking. Um, most arrows, the standard ones, have three, right? And you will notice that there are three for the three, there is one that is a different color from the others. There is a reason. Um, when knocking, there will be only one side that is flat. The other side has this. If you have this in the wrong place, you will rip it off. So, um, you want to make sure that the flat side is not going to hit your riser as you are shooting, right? So you want that to be flat there. Um, again, if you do it this way, it's gonna go whoop, and right there, it's gonna get chopped off, right? And then it becomes an illegal thing because it's, um, it's damaged veins and, and your arrow gets pulled. So try to avoid that. Also, if you do lose the arrow and that has that Again, it's going to affect your flight, right? It's going to do this, and all of a sudden your arrow's going something where, somewhere where you really do not want it going. And uh, safety is everything in this game, um, particularly for archers, because what we do is a dangerous thing. Um, so it is onto us to be safe while we're doing it. Um, there's a lot of LARPs that do not have archery or used to have it and had it removed. So, um, for us to be able to keep having archery in this game, is it is on us as archers to play as safely as possible. We take in all considerations on when to shoot, when not to shoot, um, and shooting safely. So, um, are there any questions so far? Now, when you're actually loosing your arrow, um, some things to keep in mind. Um, think of it as, as, as plucking, like you're playing the harp, right? Right, you don't want to, um, like have like a hard thing, right? Um, again, you, you don't want to be hard, abrupt, or anything like that, you don't want to be um, affecting your flight, right? The flight, the flight of the arrow needs to be controlled, steady. Um, and if you're not, if you don't have a good enough grip, right, um, you can actually end up sliding early in, in which you end up doing as a dry fire, um, essentially. So, uh, quick note on dry firing. Dry firing is when you don't have an arrow, you're not prepped, you, you draw and you let go early and it just snaps, right? You can snap your limbs doing that. You can break, uh, ugh, there's so much, there's so much you can break. Um, it's very, very bad for your bow. Please, please, please do not, bad. Um, so always be shooting with an arrow in it. Um, if anyone ever uh, wants to see your bow, and uh, wants to draw and see what the thing is, uh, make sure that you are 100% certain that they are not gonna dry fire. Make sure that that is a stipulation that you explain to them before you ever hand over your bow. Because there are so many people that will just go, oh, neat, and let go. And all of a sudden, you know, you're gonna end up with chattered limbs. And uh, that's uh, no bueno, right? So, um, let's 
see if I can actually loose this in here. I got enough room and a target. Just happen to have a shield in the other room. I can reach. <laughs> um, Tyler, I know you're watching in the other room. I love you. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, just real quick before I make this shot. Um, some folks will just let go um, a little bit past their um, their anchor point. Again, I, I go with more of a that, that that Zen sort of shot. So when I when I loose, my arm goes out back straight. Just a, a nice fluid thing. Um, it has to do with keeping loose tension, breathing with the shot. It's just a complete release. Um, personal preference, your form of shooting. Um, so that's just sort of how I do it. If I can actually do this shot. There it is. <laughs> um, yeah. So just nice, fluid, and you let go. Um, any extra tips for the three vein loading? Anything to make it quicker? Um, is this one? Okay. Uh, basically, there's there's a lot of ways to do it. Um, there's different um, finger positionings. Um, YouTube is great. I, I definitely suggest um, looking up different hand positions, um, especially if you want to shoot, um, do like speed shooting. Um, there's there's a whole way to do it. Um, very popular with the the uh, Mongolian horse bow style of shooting um, with those types of bows. Um, but basically, get into sort of a thing to where you can feel and memorize the feel of, of the arrow. You can feel where it's flat, right? Um, when you pick it up, feel it. Just, just feel it as you go, right? Um, that way you can, you can still do that blind knock, right? And again, if you have um, the knock stopper, you just get it underneath and pop it up, right? So you feel for the edge, goes on and you slide it up. So you can still do blind knocking if you um, if you have the three. Um, it's just sort of a, a, a textural thing um, and a feeling thing. Also you can put like you can put like a little like dot sort of thingy um, on the one side so that you can you can feel it better. Um, some some knocks um, actually have a little bump on one side so that you can actually uh, feel just from that alone. Um, so it's sort of like, um, it's sort of like braille in a way. Um, it's that sort of uh, size of bump and it's, uh, it's pretty distinct from one side from the other. So there's that very, very prominent dot on it. Um, so. When you're when you're getting arrows and stuff, just uh, see if it's there. Um, so that can also again help, right? You want to be able to to get into that uh, feeling of just the, the the texture of it, just the the feel of it in your hand. And um, while you're home um, during this time, you can just be sitting on your couch, right? You feel it, and you put it in. Check, got it, right? Feel it. Put it in, check, got it, right? Just practice. Practice just right inside your house. You don't have to be out in the field to do this, right? Right? Oop. There's the dot, and got it, right? Just learn to feel it with your hand. Um, any other questions? Do, do, do. Okay, 
Um, I was shown to put all three, I think that's fingers, I'm assuming, um, below the arrow, but the dude at the archery store, um, by the dude at the archery store, I notice you have one over and two below. Is that a personal preference or what? Okay, so there are multiple ways of, um, of having your, your fingers um, here. Uh, yeah, you can do three below. Um, you can do just two, or you do one um, above and two below. Um, it is a personal preference sort of thing. I prefer this. This feels far more secure to me. Um, it gives me more control over where um, where that knock is sitting, and it keeps the the um, the balance of uh, the bowstring in a good place for me. Um, and, and using it in this position makes it easier for me to pull. So that is that is why I use the one above, two below. So yes, it is a per personal preference thing. Um, this is just how I do it. Um, Okay, um, yeah, so there is not a, um, this is not the type of weapon to where um, you have to do it with only one position, right? Um, if you are a lefty, you can get a left-handed bow. Um, so that's going to change your positioning. Um, this is a very distinctly right-handed bow, um, where you can tell some of them are, um, are multi-hand where they'll have a riser sort of thing at the both sides. Um, but usually if they have, um, unless they're types of bows that you can shoot off the hand where you can go either side, um, it will have a very, very distinct side that you, your arrow is sitting on. Um, so I'll, I'll try to do this. Um, oh, it's really comfortable. <laughs> um, just so you can see what it looks like from the other side if you are a lefty. Um, so it's just a mirrored thing, right? Again, you're going to have um, the same positioning with your arm, nice and straight, right? Uh, trying to figure out how to do this left hand, it's really hard. Right. Again, you're going to have the position there. You're using your anchor. So, mm -hmm. right, it's the same form, it's just switching what hands is doing what. So. Um, next question. Uh, I'm going to go over a full section of, of, um, warm-up drills and things, so that's going to be at the end, so I will, I will double back to that. Um. Yep, and I mentioned that before, um, there are different um, there are different shooting techniques and methods um, like the ones with the Mongolian horse bows um, where it's a it's a very very different thing like things going into your palm and how you hold it and then there's a there's different ways to uh, where your hand is the quiver where you're you know holding your arrows over here with your other hand on the bow there's just there's a lot of different ways to do it so um, do some research, see all the different methods, try them, see what works best for you, um, see what styles you like. Again, I'm gonna repeat this a million times, this is how just I personally do it. This is not the only way to do it, this is a way to do it. Um, this is what works for me, this may not work for you, but it might. So again, just try things. Um, there are multiple options for multiple things. Um, doo -doo -doo. Okay, um, so eye dominance is the actually the next thing, so I will go over that. Um, you you do not need to um, to switch to to a different hand just because of which eye is dominant. You just have to 
lead with the right, uh, the correct eye when you're shooting. You don't have to switch up um, just because your eye is um, different dominant. Um, I am not left-handed. <laughs> um, I am I am right-handed. Um, okay, so um, so let's get into the accuracy bit. Um, to be accurate, you, you you will need to know which eye is your dominant eye. Um, so and how you figure that out is you uh, make that sort of diamond with your hand, and you're going to put it on something that is stationary. Make sure that it's in between and stare at it. Now draw your hand back and boom. That's your dominant eye. So mine is my left. So I am right handed but my my dominant eye is my left. So when I am shooting, right, I am leading with that eye. I am focusing on the target with this eye. Now I've seen a lot of folks close their other eye when they're shooting. Please don't. <laughs> Please don't. Um, you will lose your depth perception if you close one eye. Um, it's this weird stereotype thing from the movies um, that folks will do that, especially like if they're shooting a gun, they're like, it's, that's not, that's not a thing. Uh, you will lose your depth perception and uh, it is important to have your depth perception when shooting. So do not close one eye just lead with your dominant eye. So you're focusing on what you're shooting. You're looking at where you want the shot to go and you're doing it with your dominant eye, right? It's keeping your focus with the dominant eye. Um, yep, you just, you're again, right? Um, I'm already. I shoot with uh, with my my left eye dominance, right? So I am looking with my left eye. My left eye is the one that is focusing down, right? All of that is coming right from here, right? So you're just you're leading with your eye. So try it a couple of times. Um, if you're having issues, um, just you really gotta really gotta focus just um, make sure you're not switching eyes make sure you're not doing some cross thing look really precisely just at one thing just focus 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 and do it slowly don't just like bleh, right um, just do it slow and gradual make sure it gets to the right eye Sorry, the correct eye questions again if you guys have questions please tag me because um, there's a lot of chat um, and it is very hard to read through and also to figure out if y'all are talking to each other or to me so um, it's very very important that you tag me please and thank you <laughs> um yeah never not stopping okay let's go over instinctual shooting um, when you are shooting at moving targets, um, you are not um, aiming. <laughs> um, what you are doing is instinctual shooting. So the concept of instinctual shooting is uh, your brain does this cool thing where it has an auto-targeting mechanism. Um, when somebody throws a ball, you catch it, that's your brain um, auto-targeting mechanism, right? 
um, you're not in that moment going, okay, if it's being thrown this quickly at this angle, in, it will drop at this point, which means it will fall here, which means my hands must move this quickly to me. That's overthinking it. If you overthink it, you will actually um, disengage your auto-targeting mechanism um, and you'll likely miss. So um, you need to be able to, to t sort of trust your mind and let it, um, let it do what it does best. So don't overthink it. Um, also, when you're, you're shooting moving targets, um, basically you're shooting for where they're going, not where they are. Because uh, if you shoot for where they are, by the time it reaches them, they are no longer there. So you want to sort of, you're anticipating where they're going, right? So that that's happening, right? Um, so uh, a drill that you can do for this, um, If, uh, if you're on Paragon Academy, um, the instructions are on there. Um, it's called one with the force on there. <laughs> um, basically what you do is, um, if you're a field, like pick a tree and uh, you start with your back to it and uh, go about like 30 paces out to start and uh, you're gonna you're gonna load up and you're going to spin and shoot so you're gonna go around and as soon as your eye sees the tree right you pull them like a right so it's just like boom um, there is no wait time there is no letting your brain um, overthink it as soon as your eye your dominant eye makes contract with your target you release. Um, so starting behind gives you that sort of, um, it gives you that moment of, I can't see it, I can't overthink it, it's there. Um, every time you, you t get the shot, right, um, take a step forward, um, farther away from the tree. So you take your shot, if you, if you hit your target, you go a step farther away from the tree. Take another shot. If you get it, take another step farther away from the tree. Uh, do this until you you uh, unload your entire quiver. If you miss a shot, stay at the same place that you took the shot until you get it, then move to the next. Um, you can redo this several times, right? Uh, go through your full quiver. Uh, you can you can stop off where you left off if you want to see how far you can go, test your limits, um, or you can just reset, grab all your stuff, start again from that 30 foot um, point. So that's just a, just a drill you can do. Um, also, again, right, doing uh, the blind knocking drills, right, where you, you can just be on your couch, really, just right, you're not looking, you feel it, slide it. And you're in, right? Just feeling it in your hand and getting on the string. So it's it's a nice, easy thing you can do just on your couch at home. Just easy drills you can do right here. Um, is there any other questions before we go on? Um, ah. Um, not on topic, but I love your glittery, shiny garb. Uh, thank you. Um, this is super new. I actually got this at an auction. Um, this was made by Rebecca from um, Bell Hollow, so props to her. Um, also, remember, if your parks are doing auctions, they might have some 
cool things in there and you're supporting the park and you get some cool stuff. So um, yeah, I, I had made this previous, so it just happens to match. Um, these pants were, were made um, for me as a gift for my birthday from a, a good friend in Rochester, uh, Riley. Um, yeah, I just, I like mixing and matching random pieces and uh, yeah, it's fun. And it's got a little hood too, so very archery. <laughs> Um, yep, um, Rebecca made this, and then I've got my other, um, my other vesty thing on top. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, just, um, just a note on what, um, Delia just said. Um, make sure that you are shooting at different ranges um, because on the battlefield your opponents are going to be everywhere right um, you need to be able to do a safe half draw within your 20 and you have to be able to do a a safe long shot right um, from from 100 feet um, basically if at any point you are not certain that you can do it safely, don't do it. Um, there's a lot of folks that will start um, start uh, around where they do this crazy high arcing thing, and they have no idea how that's going to land. Um, they just go, "Oh, they're all bundled in a in a clump. It's going to hit something." Um, it's gonna hit somebody in the face, right? Um, cause that comes down and it does this and it's gonna pop somebody right in the eye. Um, I've, I've seen so many headshots, um, from that shot, uh, because folks just for some reason think that it's a safe shot and it's not, it really isn't. Um, there, if you are trained and you know, um, you know the arc, you know how it lands, you know where it lands. It can be done safely, but you have to practice, you have to know it, and you have to be confident in that shot. You gotta know what you're doing. Um, also, just a side note, if you've never um, shot before, if you have folks at your park that have never shot before, um, do not yourself start in a battle game. Do not have folks at your park start in a battle game shooting. Do not let the first time they ever shoot an arrow be at a human being. Um, again, these are extremely dangerous weapons. They are actually weapons, like real life weapons. Um, and, and we need to treat them with respect, and we need to treat our opponents with respect, um, and we need to do this safely. It's on us. So um, something um, that I've started in my park is, um, as the, the GM of archers, um, anytime there is uh, a new a new individual uh, to archery that wants to shoot in a game, um, we do bow tests. Now, they're very, very simple. Um, you do not need to be a good shot. You do not need to be super accurate. Um, you just need to be safe, right? Um, so basically what I do for that test is um, I give them the bow, I give them an arrow. I ask them first to knock the bow, right? simple. Just knock the bow. Um, if they have it to where the the, um, the fletching is on the wrong side, because a lot of them are, you know, the three uh, veins, uh, I will then teach them how to do it correctly. Um, if also, if they're, um, if they don't have like a, a knock stopper and they're like doing this, right, like the angle is like super off, right, um, I will show them how to do it correctly. Then I will take it off, I will hand them it again, and ask them to redo it. Um, rinse, repeat. Once I know that they can do it correctly and safely without me telling them anything, without me being there, they've passed that section, we move on. Uh, so the next section is draw. Just draw. Draw and hold. Don't, don't lose. Just hold. Um, this lets you know if they have the correct positioning, if they're going to be pulling, straining, or tearing any muscles. 
uh, if they are going to hurt themselves while operating the bow. So again, just draw and hold, right? Really, like, don't loose, just relax. Again, if they show that they are not in a dangerous position, you move on. If they are not in a good physical position, show them where to go, right? With the two eye, woof, lower that, right? The problem is, right? Show them. Um, again, once, um, I'll ask them to do it again. Once they can do it without me correcting their physical positioning, um, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be safe, just in a position that, that they are not going to hurt themselves. Uh, we move on to the last section. The last section is knock, draw, and then release. So you pick a tree and you just have them try to shoot the tree. It is not important whether or not they hit the tree. It is important where they are, the angle they are shooting. If all of their shots are just super low and they ground everything, cool. They're, they're not a risk of, of popping somebody in the face. So yeah, that's fine. Um, if every shot is hitting a part of the tree where that where someone's head would be, it's no bueno, right? So again, you show them the right positioning, you show them how to arc, um, you, you show them um, the distances, you show them the half draw, the full draw, um, and also right, make sure they know where that 20 foot uh, range is. Again, if they can demonstrate shooting the bow at a height that is not dangerous to anyone, then you clear them and they're good to go. Um, it, is, it is very quick, it is very easy, um, and again, you don't have to be super accurate, right? Some folks will just knock it right away, they're perfect, they do that and it's perfect, and they go, they hit the tree and it's at a good spot, and you're like, okay, cool, go have fun. Um, it's just, uh, it's just, it's good to know that they're gonna do it safely, that they're not gonna hurt themselves or others. <coughs> it is important that anyone that goes out into that field does not hurt themselves or others. So it's on to us to, to share the knowledge, to teach others um, to do it safely and not just assume that they know what they're doing, assume that they're going to be safe um, because there's, there are too many folks I've seen in this game that have never shot a bow in their life and somebody will just hand them loaner gear and just go have fun. And they, they won't even know how to knock it. They're just going, um, sit, sit like this. That, I think it, okay, so I go under. Oh, it's on the wrong side, okay. Uh, I've seen this, like, literally I've seen this. Um, don't let that be the first time that person ever takes a shot. Um, now also, um, weather conditions. Uh, if the wind is whipping and it is, you do not have control over your shot whatsoever, don't play archer that day. Choose another class. Um, play archer with flow. <laughs> um, there are other options. Uh, do not take shots on days that you cannot control the flight of your arrow. Um, I know it is really hard and it is it's a really crappy to not be able to play your class um, and to not be able to shoot. Um, but it's also crappy to send your friend to the hospital um, because your shot is, is out of control. Um, so don't, um, don't put people in risk like that. Now, um, on the other, uh, the flip side of that is, uh, if there is an archer on your field, you need to know how to dodge and block safely because there are things you can do that are dangerous that will put you in danger when the archer is doing everything that they can do safely, um, but you're like doing, you're, you're dodging into the shot, right? Um, if an archer is, is, um, is going for center mass and their shot's straight on, right? It's coming right for you. If you duck, you have now put your face into the arrow. Um, that is not the archer's fault. <laughs> that, 
that is that is your fault for diving into that shot, right? So don't ever duck. <laughs> don't ever duck. Um, also, jumping up also, I've seen a lot of um, shots there. Um, and, and oh gosh, they go down real quick uh, because for some reason they try to jump over the arrow. Don't do that. It's not gonna, it's not gonna go well, right? Um, the archer is aiming for a very particular safe spot on you and uh, you changing the level of like where your head is um, will make that all of a sudden unsafe for you. So when you are dodging an arrow, go right or go left. Uh, do not go up and down. Um, or you're blocking, right? You're gonna um, put that shield right in that path, right? Make sure that you know the, the hit is solid. You're not going to whack it out. Um, if you whack the arrow, the arrow is now going to spin or whip wildly at someone else. Just clean, let it hit, be that solid hit. Um, if anything, go down. Um, if you need to, to do an, some sort of thing, um, don't pop it up and don't pop it to the side. Just also, right, if you're, if you are blocking with a weapon or something like that, uh, you have to passively block. Um, it is specific in the rule book. You, you can't grab arrows out of the air. You can't bat them out of the air. You have to passively block, right? So it's just that you're just being in the position, letting it hit and drop. So it is extremely important that you're not changing the flight of the arrow. Um, because this part coming at your face is, is going to be very, very dangerous. So do not change the path um, of the arrow as it is in flight. Um, so just some random safety tips. Um, are there any questions before I move on to the next thingling? Any advice against other archers? Um, yes. <laughs> Armor. Um, as, as an archer, you are allowed to wear two points of armor. Um, I would highly suggest full body. Um, right? Um, so your chest is protected, your legs are protected, your arms are protected. This is very important. Um, if you have armor, you can prevent getting bullied out of the shot. Um, a good archer will try to bully you out of your shot, right? Um, they'll make it to where you all of a sudden, you don't, um, you don't lose your arrow, and then you start going into dodging maneuvers. Um, if you have armor, you can tank that, that shot, right? Um, just stand your ground, stare them down, and, and make it very clear that you're not going to get bullied out of your shot, right? Let them shoot you if you have to, right? If they don't have armor and you have armor and you both take the shot and you both hit, you're still alive and they're dead. There's the trade-off. It's fine. Um, again, right, you have a mend. So, you know, you have options. Yes, if your bow gets um, hit, mend the bow. But if you get hit in the chest... And, um, and you have to take that shot, and they're reloading for that shot, do the quick mend on yourself there. Um, side tip, if you have multiple bows, bring multiple bows. Have your second bow um, all set up, have it at base, right? Um, sometimes, depending on your positioning, you might be really close to your base to where um, your bow breaks, you, you go 10 feet that way and grab a new bow. Um, that way you can keep your mend for, um, excuse me, uh, for your armor. Um, oh, how much quest coming up? Um, yeah, so just that's just one thing. Um, mind games are, are really a big thing for, for archery. It's a lot of um, battlefield psychology. Um, just other, some random... Um, strategy tip things. Um, sometimes it is better to hold the shot and not take it. 
Um, I know that seems sort of counterproductive to um, shooting, but um, a good melee fighter will wait for you to take that shot and then run you down, um, knowing that they can reach you before you can reload. So a lot of folks will do this thing to where they're like, wait, 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 let her, let, let her take the shot. Let her take a shot and then we're just going to run. And they say it out loud. Like, I'm, I'm right there. <laughs> I know what you're doing. You didn't even have to say it. I knew you were going to do this anyways. Um, and then you just hold it. You just hold it forever. And they'll just stand there forever. <laughs> They're, they'll be so just, just gotta let go sometime. No, we're gonna wait till that shot is taken and then I'll, I'll run at her then. You can hold it so long that your team ends up behind them and drum rolls them all to death before you ever even lose it. You never got run down. You have all of your armor. You never even lost a single arrow in that engagement. And they're all dead. All of them. Super easy peasy. Um, so, and, and this is, so this is a question that comes up a lot. Um, this is a 35 pound max. This is a 28. This is the bow I prefer to use, right? This is the one I got my, at my base. And if I'm taking really long shots, that's the one. Um, but folks always ask, why do I go with a lower poundage? This is why. Um, I cannot hold a shot for very long with 35 pound max. That's a lot of weight. But this one, I can hold that shot very long. Now, there's other things that you can do to ease up um, the muscle fatigue and things like that um, for those hold shots. Um, right, you can do like, right, if you're holding it, right, right, you can do the, that, that pump fake thing, right? So where you're just, yeah, you're just like, oh, I'll do it. Okay, well, hit you, you, right? You can play around with that um, to where you're you're ready to, to do it and you're doing that sort of, yeah, whoop, right? Um, it will still work the same as, as holding it. Um, they they will think twice about running you down because um, they're they're going to want you to lose that before they take that risk, right? Especially if you're using a pinning arrow. Um, because if they go to run you down and you pop them with this, and all of a sudden they're just stuck there, um, that all goes to waste, right? That whole attempt. And um, then I am for certain going to be able to knock that next arrow and, and kill them at the next point. Um, so just random tips. Um, Another thing, another tip. <clears throat> Don't shoot when they're staring you down. Um, our arrows are weighted. So um, they can be very easy to dodge because they're slow. Um, it's extremely easy to dodge when you're staring the archer down and you're waiting for the shot, you're anticipating the release, you know where, like, the angle of it, you can see when they let go, and you can anticipate and you can go into a position where you're dodging it super easy. Um, right, and also if you don't, if you don't have armor and um, maybe you don't feel comfortable uh, not getting bullied out of that, you know, your shot, um, and you prefer to dodge and then shoot. Um, again, it's you. You watch them. You watch them um, because you will have a far easier time dodging that shot when you know it's coming and where it's coming. So you are going to take those shots when they are not looking. Um, now, if they know that and they're staring at you, and you just like, I really need to shoot you. <laughs> um, what you can do is you can fake them out. <clears throat> Uh, Tyler, if you're still watching this, could you grab me a Gatorade? I love you. Thank you. Um, so what you do is, right, if you're staring at them, it'd be like, right, just go off, make it look like you're going to go for the next guy, and then immediately come back, right? It, to them, it looks like a huge angle shift. For you, it's, it's like a foot, right? You're just going from here to here and right back. 
is a very small thing. Um, but it will be enough for them to look away, right? You don't need them to turn around or go somewhere else. All you need them to do is shift their focus. And in that split second they do that, pop them, right? Um, take that, that attack of opportunity. Um, you, uh, and use that to your advantage. Um, I'll check to see if there's any other questions before I move on. Um, oh gosh, um, yeah, guys, um, please wear a cup. <laughs> um, if there is another archer, at some point in time, you will get hit there. Um, Archers want to take safer shots and shape for shots or lower shots. So um, even if they're trying to go for your belly, it might dr drop at some point, right? Um, if they're if they're not spot on, if you're moving, um, that shot might go just a smidge lower than they were hoping, and you're gonna get pegged. And uh, I've I've seen I've seen folks go down and puke on field. Um, and it is, oh gosh, it's real bad. <laughs> it's real bad. So um, there is there is protection for that. Um, there's also different armors. You don't have to use you know a, a cup per se. Um, there's like uh, like sort of like tacits and things like that. There's other um, armors that cover those um, those spots <laughs> um, that you can use, but. Um, it's it's going to happen eventually. It's it's going to happen. So um, so take that into account. Know the risk and um, weigh weigh your options. If you're if you're fine with taking that shot, then okay. <laughs> uh, but if you if you know the very visceral feeling that that would come from that, um, yeah, I'm assuming <laughs> um, just from from the reactions I've seen when those shots happen. Um, If I, if I were a guy, I, 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 I would uh, wear a cup. <laughs> um, check to see if there's any other questions. Oh, I'm just going to scroll up see a bit more. Yeah, so again, avoiding those uh, nut shots. <laughs> um, wear something there. Um, also, right, if you have a shield or um, even uh, your sword, um, block. <laughs> you can block there. Um, but again, right, um, sidestepping, right? If you're dodging an arrow, go right or go left. So how you avoid that shot is you watch the archer. You watch them, you stare them down, you see who they're shooting at, um, try to fake them out, right, um, or run them down um, if, if you think you can, um, but if, if you run them down, understand also that they might do the, the spin shot on you, um, so it's, it's risk management. But if you are going to physically dodge a thing, you go right or you go left. Um, and that will also help you avoid that nut shot. <laughs> um. Okay, question. Uh, Re-blocking arrows passively. There's actually a bad rules clarification that says that being able to snatch arrows out of the air with your hand is a local Reeves call. Dear God. Okay. Um, if you're a Reeve, do not let it happen, please. Like, um, for multiple reasons. Uh, there are very few, um, folks out there that can actually perform that catch safely. Um, there are folks that can perform that 
maneuver safely but damage the arrow um, in the process. So lots of things to consider. Um, this is a risk management thing. Don't put your players at risk. Do not allow a move that will hurt people. Um, if they go and they try to do a thing, they could miss and get popped, right? Um, if they don't catch it and it deflects, gets hit, um, again, you're changing the path of the, the flight of the arrow. Getting this to where you're trying to catch it and you miss and all of a sudden that happens or you're hitting it and it's going to whack somebody next to you. Uh, this is extremely dangerous. Uh, you don't want to do anything that can change the flight, spin the arrow. Um, do not allow folks to attempt to grab them, to block them. Do not, do not, do not, please, 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 please. Um, cause it is entirely unsafe and, and someone's going to get hurt and it will be on you because you let it happen because you allowed the players to attempt those maneuvers. So if you are a Reeve, please do the job, do the job safely. Uh, do not allow that to happen. Also, um, it damages the arrows as well. If they catch it, um, they can end up ripping veins off. Um, they catch it by this they could end up uh, clawing in um, they might even I don't know rip the head off uh, there's, there's so many things I've just I've seen a lot of damaged arrows um, with these types of maneuvers and um, also the archer may not know that there is damage to the arrow when the maneuver happens so in the middle of a game somebody catches it does some sort of damage rips the thing off and it's on the ground and they're going, they grab it, they throw it in their quiver, and as they're shooting, boom, it goes out. All of a sudden, you have a damaged arrow getting shot at somebody. Don't let that happen. Um, be smart, be safe, uh, and do not put players at risk. So, um, if you are a Reeve, do not let that maneuver happen on your field. If you are in a game and uh, you're playing, like, Monk, um, and for some reason you have a Reeve letting you do that, be, be, um, be smart, be kind, and don't do it. Um, yeah, it just drives me crazy. Um, also, another safety weird rules thing um, that really needs to be changed. Hitting a bow with your sword. Um, you can break a a bow um, by hitting it with a weapon. Um, this is extremely dangerous. Um, what I have, I've had this happen to me before and I've seen it go horribly wrong with other folks um, in the past where, um, actually it's <laughs> the story of how I actually got concussed for the first time. Um, there's other things where uh, if you hit it right, you can snap the bowstring off. Um, this is a lot of pressure, tension on a thing, and, uh, when it comes off, it is like a spring-loaded thing, and getting hit with, with any part of this as it pops is very dangerous. Um, so hitting it with a sword is, you're going to, you're either gonna hurt yourself, somebody around you, or you're gonna hurt that archer. Um, it is more likely that you're gonna hurt the archer because um, they're the ones that are right there. Um, but yeah, so another another thing, um, the story of how I got concussed. Um, I was fighting another archer and um, we broke each other's bows by shooting them. Um, I dropped my bow on the ground and then fought him um, single stick to single stick. He held his bow um, while he was fighting me um, and ended up blocking one of my shots with the bow. Um, so if you're an archer, don't block shots with your bow. Um, and if you're melee, don't hit the bows. 
because what ended up happening was it hit the bottom and the top of this, right? So his was a recurve as well. Um, this went into my temple and um, I don't remember anything from after the impact um, and randomly came to when I was standing at base. Apparently, I just like in a daze said nothing and just walked back to base. Just in a weird daze like trance like state, I just took a shot to the head, said nothing, and just walked to base. Uh, I have no recollection of it. And um, it was. It ended up being a pretty severe concussion and uh, it was like a week of having to be um, in complete darkness and silence and the pain was just, oh my gosh, it was unbearable. Um, these are very dangerous. These are very dangerous things. Um, having wood come and smack you in the head because somebody hit, um, hits it is, oh gosh, please don't, <laughs> just please don't. Um, these are dangerous, delicate things, um, and, and we gotta be a lot, a lot safer and a lot smarter when we're, um, when we're operating them, um, or maneuvering around them, um, so just more, uh, safety tip stuff. Um, do, do, do. just gonna check to see if there's any more questions. Okay, um, totally agree with you regarding arrow grabbing. My response was that I wouldn't allow it as a reef. Thank you. <laughs> um, and if I saw a player grabbing my arrows as an archer, I would tell them to not handle my equipment that way. Yeah, it also, that's a huge thing. Um, advocating is important um, if somebody is um, doing that and you you don't end up getting a choice um please talk to the person doing it and tell them that you are uncomfortable with that and um try to educate them on the dangers of it and why they shouldn't be doing it right because they might be going oh this is cool i'm going to try this and um not actually realize the actual risk and danger involved um but after that information they might um opt not to do it Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, veins and knocks coming at your face, uh, it's not something you want, um, Pandora's been, been, what was it, cut on the, on the face before, um, I believe I was there for, uh, when it happened to you, um, it's nuts. Yeah, no walker in the middle for them. Um, if you're a reef that allows dangerous things, no walkers in the middle. <laughs> yeah okay so also a random um a random thing um there's some folks that uh allow like arrow sharing and stuff um with the archer class you can't actually do that you're not allowed to um according to the rule book um because we have specialty arrows and other classes do not um also because you're only allowed a certain number of, um, of certain types. Um, basically it's like a spell list, um, when you're picking your arrows to begin with. Um, so if you're just shooting someone else's arrows, you could end up, you know, using, you know, nine pinning arrows when you only had three. So, um, that's cheating. <laughs> Um, and it's actually not allowed, so, um, if, if you have a park that likes to do arrow share, if you have an archer, you can't do that. Um, also just, like, kind of a side note on it, um, 
I've never really approved of arrow sharing um, personally because um, an archer is responsible for their gear and for the safety and upkeep of their gear. Um, if you have someone else operating your gear, um, you don't know if they have handled it inappropriately or damaged it at any point. Um, also, when you're collecting arrows, uh, you know where you shot. So it is easier for you to find them because you go, oh, I know I killed that person over there, so it has to be somewhere on this side of the field in this vicinity. Um, if you're letting other folks use your arrows, you have no idea where they shot them. Um, so they could end up shooting them in a bush or, uh, um, or, a, just like, a some other area that can fall into a river, depending on where your field is. Um, and, and you have no idea. You have absolutely no idea where they take those shots. So all of a sudden you have to go everywhere to try to find them. Um, and I've seen way too many arrows get lost that way. So just, um, I'm gonna call it a pet peeve. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Um, Rajavia. Um, also, bows are not cheap. Breaking your amp guard sword won't put you out financially. These are expensive. Um, I have I have one bow that's worth like three hundred and fifty dollars. Um, a very long time to save for. Um, you don't want to risk damaging these by any means. Um, I, I would much rather, uh, I'd much rather do damage to my $10 sword than my $300 bow. <laughs> um, do, do, do. Let's read things. Okay. From Tarak. The feat that pinning arrows and destruction arrows are some of the best effects in the game. What are your thoughts on this? Destruction arrow is terrible. <laughs> uh, my personal feeling on destruction arrows. Um, a normal arrow already does a lot. Um, These really only um, can break shields, but there's also swift mend out there, and uh, if you're a warrior, you can harden it, and these don't do anything um, when that happens. So um, most folks are wearing armor um, that you can um, cut through with just a regular arrow. Um, and again, right, you can break weapons with these in one shot as well. So um, if you're wearing three points of armor, this is going to take all of that in one shot. Um, this does the same thing. Um, so it's only really if you're dealing with somebody that wears more than three points of armor. So who is that? Um, that's going to be paladins and anti-paladins, um, which we don't see too many of. No, I do play anti-paladin. <laughs> um, also, um, it, just because they can wear four points of armor doesn't mean that they have four points of armor. So that's a thing too. Some do. That's true. All right. Um, I usually have four points in my chest, but not on my limbs. Um, so sometimes there, there's really no point of that. So the only other thing would be warriors. Um, and then warriors get to a point to where they can have ancestral and then, um, and it really is just, this is just useless then. Um, so I do not feel that that is one of the strongest in the game. I don't think that it's strong at all. Um, and I I usually take just one of them um, and prefer to go with the pinning. Pinning, now, this is one of, one of the best in the game. Um, when you have classes like uh, Warrior where... Um, your arrows aren't going to do a lot on them um, when they've got like ancestral. Um, you and you can't break their shield if it's hardened. You can pin them. You can hit them in their shield or their weapon and pin them. Um, so 
you have someone you can't kill, but you can stop them. Um, additionally, if you, um, if you're able to kill a barbar with one of these, you can stop their fight after death. Um, these are very, very strong. Um, I think the big thing in this game that uh, folks don't realize, and especially for those that have been playing in like V7 and earlier rule sets, um, this version of the game is uh, crowd control is OP. Um, it's not it's not the class shatter games we used to do, right? Because we don't have um, lives per se for most things like we used to. Um, so it's a lot more about just stopping folks so that you can achieve the game objective. Um, Remember also that if you're killing somebody, you've just given them all their armor back, all their per lives, um, and what is usually a very short death count. Um, don't don't help them. <laughs> don't give them more things. Um, there's really really no point. Now, if you just leg them and leave them, do it, <laughs> right? Uh, they lose the armor. They can't be running at you. Um, they're not getting their prolards back. They're not um, going after that game objective, at least uh, very slowly if they are. Um, and you can just pin them and you can keep hitting them, right? Just keep shooting them in the dead leg with a pinning arrow and they're just gonna keep sitting there um, all day. You just crowd control for days. Um, so yeah, I would say that this is one of the, the strongest. Um, and then the other one, which is the one I shot across uh, through the hallway, <laughs> um, is a phase arrow. Um, phase arrow is, is very, very good, um, because it can go through magic armor, uh, it goes through enchantments, right? So, uh, if you have a druid that has a stupid amount of enchantments on them, um, right through that. Um, so yeah, they will love those. Um, but the unfortunate thing is you've got the one, right? So, um, you have to pick your target very carefully. You have to take your shot very carefully. You don't want to waste that shot. Um, and you also don't want to take that shot where it's really, really far away. You can't get it back easily. Now, I will go over one strat with um, uh, Evolving Reload, because if it is really far away and you can't get it safely, um, going into Reload is going to be the best option for you to do that. But uh, there's another cool thing you can do with Reload. Um, I, I call it the Escape Hatch. We have an Escape Hatch, and that's called Reload. Um, we are the only thing in the game that has a state that puts you out of game. So um, when you are in reload, you can't be taken out of it. Uh, you can only be taken out of it by a reeve. So they would take you out of that if you're abusing it. If you sit in, in it for too long and you're stalling the game um, because you are just you can't be affected at all. You're, you can't be, you can't be touched, you can't be affected, you're out of game. Um, so don't cheese it, don't abuse it, um, but also use it wisely. Use it strategically. Um, learn to speed cast it. It's gonna be a big thing. Speed cast it. Um, so, cool thing you can do is uh, you can't use um, reload and shoot regular, these uh, specialty arrows, because you know, you have to do a cast, right? Um, you have to say the name of the arrow, um, and then the word arrow after. Um, that's another thing, random thing. Um, if you are shooting a pinning arrow, you can't just say pinning. You must say pinning arrow. Um, a full in incantation is the type of arrow and then the word arrow. Um, I've seen a lot of folks uh, mess that up, so just, just a random casting thing. Um, also, your feet must be uh, planted. It is done like a regular thing, so you can't be doing a running shot if you are shooting a specialty arrow. Um, so, two feet on the planet on the ground, um, you say the name of the arrow, end with an arrow, take the shot. Um, specialty arrows. Now, normal arrows. You do not need to be planted, you do not need to say anything, you can do running shots with these, but uh, the cool thing with reload is you can be casting reload and shooting these. Now, don't move your feet, because you're still doing an incantation, but you can be shooting regular arrows while you're casting. Um, so if you are in a situation and you, you're you like, oh, I feel like that guy is gonna run me down, um, start casting it and, and start lobbing these, <laughs> right? Um, 
knocked my arrows to my bow, I let them fly my quarters low. Now I pause to go reload, I knocked my arrows to my bow, I let them fly my quarters low. Now I pause to go reload. Right? As you're going, you can be shooting the whole time. Now, they're not likely going to be running you down if you're just, you know, um, machine gunning at them, right? Um, you're also being super useful at the moment, right? You're still taking folks out as you're casting it. Um, there, there's a lot you can do with it. So, that is uh, particularly my advice. Also, if, um, if you find that your, your quiver is getting low, um, this is going to be that, that moment... Um, strategically that you're going to want to hold the shot, right? Um, as you're casting it, hold it. Hold it and and stare them down. Do your pump fakes. Um, just long enough to get yourself safely into reload so that they don't run you down, right? Um, use that escape hatch. Um, just make sure they don't, um, they don't get you before you can finish. So, um, also note that you can you can stop and not finish the incant if you don't want to go inside, right? So you can be shooting regular arrows and be starting the, the reload incant, right? And then stop. Right? If you notice, okay, no, they're trailing off now, now they're not getting anywhere near me, don't finish, right? Uh, keep it. Um, keep it, don't finish it. Use it later. Um, so that's the that's thing for reload. Um, also, just a random side tip, um, you have to come out of reload in the same spot that you started. Um, but people can base camp you, um, so what... One mistake I see a lot is that folks will go to their starting point um, when they're ready to get out of reload, and they'll, they'll sort their arrows and count them, um, and they'll do it um, in their starting position. Uh, that's telegraphing where your starting position is. So when you're doing that sorting and counting, do it away from your starting point so that you don't get base camped as you're doing it. Um, so that's just a way to kind of throw, throw folks off uh, to prevent that um, from happening. Um, doop, doop, doop. Just checking for... Oh, so, so a random uh, tidbit on um, on pinning arrow, because uh, as previously we discussed, right, um, this can stop uh, FOD. But if you are trying to trigger a, a bar bar bomb, um, don't shoot them with this, <laughs> right? Um, if you're going to perform a, a bar bar bomb and you're going to shoot your own teammate to trigger it, um, if you shoot them with a pinning arrow, you, you stop the bomb. <laughs> so just be careful with that. <laughs> um, I heard of that happening in a Phoenix League tournament once. It was, oh gosh, it's so bad. I felt so bad for them. Um, so just be very cautious of how you're doing stuff. Yeah, so um, I'll just quickly go over the other arrows. Um, suppression arrow. Uh, this is this is the one you shoot at casters <laughs> um, because it suppresses them um, for an amount of time. Um, so this is this is what you're gonna do for you know your wizards, your druids, your healers, your bards, um, everyone, every caster. Um, this is the one. Now you can use it on uh, melee fighters as well um, if they have um, any sort of spells, especially if. Uh, if you want to stop like somebody from casting ancestral armor or something like that, um, you can you can use these. So uh, these are very handy. But again, like a phaser, you only got the one. So you have to be uh, very cautious when you're doing it. Know where uh, know where it's going. Don't shoot it out, you know, a hundred feet and know that you'll never get it back. Um, and and don't take these shots when they are staring you down and you know they're good at dodging. Um, avoid. Um, now this is also my um, one of my faves is uh, the pinning or the poison arrow. Poison arrow, um, wound skill. 
This is fantastic. Um, a lot of folks do not wear leg armor. Pro tip. A lot of folks don't wear leg armor. These are amazing for just killing folks that don't wear leg armor. Um, also, you know, a lot of magic casters that don't have uh, magic armor. This will also uh, be a good kill shot on them. Um, also, uh, if you do have a warrior that is well tanked up, um, you can shoot for gaps in armor. Um, you will find that a lot of the, the back of the leg, even if there are wearing greaves, um, like the back of the knee, um, things like that, or even the knee at times, um, can be unarmored. Um, the elbow area is sometimes unarmored. Um, under the armpit can be unarmored. Um, again, those are the they have to be open up and you got to be in a very specific you know spot to be able to take those shots but if they're open and they're clean um you you can uh you can use these and pop them off and they're really really good for that so um yeah and then of course you've got your regular arrows um don't discount them um they are uh armor breaking weapon destroying um they they are they are strong on their own Um, so have them, have a bunch of them, um, they're good, they're good stuff. Um, doo -doo -doo. also, um, another thing, have a sidearm. Uh, if you get suppressed, you cannot shoot your regular, your, sorry, your specialty arrows. You can't mend, um, you can't go into reload, um. So that's when you can only shoot these. Now, if if your bow gets broken, right, and you can't shoot anything, right, maybe you've already used your mend, um, having a sidearm on you means that you are not completely defenseless. Um, if you are in a position where you're getting, you know, bum rushed, um, and you cannot shoot safely, uh, you take out your sidearm. Uh, it's, it's all about, um, survival, right? Um, the name of the game is survival. Um, oh, my actual swords are in my vehicle and I can't get to my vehicle right now. So, um, I've got this one, uh, just as sort of an example. Um, you do not need to kill your opponents with these. Um, you can block and defend yourself, rally to your team, um, and then get your, you know, whatever the situation is, if you got to get your, your bow mended or, um, or you need a, just a safe location to be able to get to reload so you can go get all of your gear, whatever the case may be, uh, do not have, um, don't get caught up on the idea of, I take my short sword out, I must use it offensively. That's not, that's not the case. Uh, you can just block and be defensive um, to just get out of danger um, long enough to, to rally. So, um, just block. Just block and get out of there. Um, yeah, so these are actually really, really good for that. Um, also, um, I'm going to go actually into whoop, quiver stuff here. Uh, I use a hip quiver myself. <laughs> basically just like a leather bag on a belt, just a big honking belt. Um, now, the big important thing with these, they need a ballast. You need to have weight at the bottom. If you do not, these are super top heavy. They will do this and all of them will spill out. But if you have your ballast in there, it's going to stay, right? See the balance of that? It's a nice angle that I'm not tripping or stepping on it, but they're also not falling out. Right? So, um, right, mine's more like this actually, so, better. Right, you can see where that, that weight is. Um, but you don't even have to sew it in, you don't have to do anything, um, you can literally just have a little baggie, stick a bunch of weight in it, toss it in the bottom of your quiver, throw your arrows in, call it a day. Super easy. Now, uh, cool thing with, uh, your short sword, um, because he, right, having on you is important. You can use it as a joystick. 
um, while you're running so that you can have complete control over your bag. So you can make sure that if you're running, right, the bottom of the bag is not going to get caught up in your legs and it's moving with you, right? So you can use it as a joystick. Um, so I advocate just sticking it in your quiver, using that. Um, quivers, which ones you use, is a personal preference thing. Um, another option is the back quiver, right? Yep. And it goes over your shoulder. So, um, for archers that like to be very mobile, this is probably going to be your best bet. But the issue with these is uh, it's hard to see your specialty arrows, right? These are really good for like archers and scouts um, and, and druids even. Um, but for archers, uh, they can be they can be difficult because you know you're trying to to see them. Um, I actually have a, a spinal condition so I can't actually turn my head far enough to be able to uh, see them what's in there so I can't actually use these. Um, I, I use this for uh, my sword when or a javelin when I'm playing um, antipaler so uh, or I just have to be able to, to feel it to pull it out. Um, so I don't actually use that for, <laughs> for Archer. Um, so yeah, so it's, again, it's personal preference. It's dependent on your shooting style um, and what you prefer. Uh, now, there's ways to do it, right? It's not impossible to do. It's just a little difficult, right? Um, having them to where you set them up, where they're in front instead of in the back, right? Knowing where you place everything. Um, you can do it by memory and things like that, right? For those that do not have spinal conditions, they can turn their head and actually see that. Um, Random pro tip for for those that do play that have uh, health concerns or spinal issues um, and have issues bending down and picking up the arrows. The claw. <laughs> um, I, I, I'll just keep this in my quiver and um, when I am picking up arrows, um, like after after rounds um, or if I'm in reload, right, where I know that um, uh, I'm not going to get hit, other people aren't going to be attacking me. Um, I can just go and I can just pick up my arrows from my hand and stick them in. So these are super, super useful. Um, I got this at like like the dollar store, so you can get them very, very cheap. Um, so just pro tip for those with medical concerns that have issues with bending. Um, also, if you do have issues with bending, you don't have something like that, how you bend is important. Um, you can strain your back, pull your back, and do um, muck up your knees. Yeah, you have to be careful with how you're bending, right? So you're not going to just bend right over, right? Um, you bend with your knees, right? And do a scoop. So you do it safely. Everything you do with archery needs to be done safely. There's too many things that are can cause you great pain. <laughs> um, just going over. Thanks. Does anyone have questions? Please let me know. There might already be questions. <laughs> I'm just going through stuff, trying to see. Uh, please remember that if you do have questions, to um, just tag me. There's a whole lot of chat. Yeah, penny arrow plus drag below. Make friends with your wizard. That is a really good tip. Um, I love doing that in Boomer so much. Um, yeah, like the big thing is, right, remember that you're on a team. Use your teammates. Um, they can do cool things in combination with your cool things that make them cooler things. Um, Okay, question. Um, so for the incantation of the arrow, you must say it before you launch the arrow. Yes. Um, it is an incantation. You must complete it and then take the shot. 
right? Veneer all. Um, yeah, so you can't shoot it at the same time, you can't shoot it and then say Pinheiro, uh, say it, release. Also, um, just a side note, I'm still looking for questions. Um, Um, right. If you, if you do not do the incantation correctly, if you just go pinning, um, if that arrow hits something, it doesn't count. It doesn't even count as an arrow. It is completely negated. Um, so it doesn't do the damage of an actual arrow. It doesn't just become a normal arrow. Uh, if you, if you miscast, the whole thing just basically disappears, vanishes. Um, so, um... Yeah. What is your thoughts on shooting multiple arrows at a time? Um, I do not prefer to do the multi shot myself. I can do it, um, but the you can shoot that amount of arrows um, quickly without having to to load them. Um, like, in the time that you're taking to load them, get the positioning and releasing, you could end up just, right, getting the next one, and just shooting them all. Um, I personally like to have an extreme amount of control over my, my arrows, and I, so I know the pinpoint where I am placing them, again, for safety reasons. Um, when you have a lot of arrows um, on your string, you are not 100% certain where all of them will land. Um, if you do a, a, a tight shot, um, they'll usually stay pretty close together. Um, right, so like doing like two at the same time is, you know, is pretty fine. Um, but it's like when you're, when you're doing like multiple ones, it can get a little tricky. Um, and sometimes like the top of the bottom one will, will not stay um, close to the, um, to the others. Um, as you're making that shot, so um, it can just, it's just you're losing more control, and I personally, I do not advocate anything to where you don't have control. Um, again, these things are just very, very dangerous things. Um, I like to be just, I like to be more in control of my shots. Um, I also, I also like to do like very specific precision things, right, like going for those gaps, um, shooting out weapons and things like that. Um, if I'm, if I have multiple arrows on it, then I'm, I'm not getting those shots. Um, and you also can't do it with specialty arrows too, right? Like you can't load up on specialty arrows because, um, you can't cast them away. Okay, um, See if there's anything else that I haven't gone over yet. Cool. Um, if there's any other questions, please let me know. We're getting to the end of um, our chat here. Um, so I'll just just say a quick note on um, on picking your targets um, and working with your team. Um, hooking up with boardmen is really good. Um, having that shield, um, an armored you know person to block out things, um, can keep you alive longer. Um, it can be a deterrent for folks running you down because honestly that's one of your biggest risks is uh, just getting run down especially by like a warrior um, where you're not going to be able to to hit them in the amount of times that uh, they could hit you and kill you before you can kill them um, and those can be very quick interactions right especially if you if you have no armor you're pretty much screwed um, 
If you have two points, they have six in Zestral. They probably have a hardened shield too. You have no shield. Um, so you're, you're pretty much almost guaranteed to be a stick paste uh, situation if you have to just go into melee against them. Um, yeah. So uh, if you have, you know, the board with you, that's the deterrent to prevent folks from running you down. You can get those shots off. It is super important that you communicate, though, with your boardman where you are shooting and your placement. Um, one thing that you can do is, uh, before you take your shot, you can tap them on the shoulder um, to let them know the side that you're on. Um, if they can't hear you, if people like are yelling a whole bunch, right? Um, right. You can use code words and things like, I'm on your three, I'm on your nine, right? Um, which is showing like the it's the thing on the clock, right? Uh, if, if, if I'm on your six, that means I'm behind you, right? It's the position of the clock. So if I'm on your three, I'm on your, on your right. Um, so just random things like that. It's, it's important just to communicate with um, any team that you're pairing up with um, for any sort of strategic maneuver. Uh, it's important that you communicate with them what you're doing because um, it can be an extremely dangerous situation if they step into your shot. Um, hitting somebody in like the back of the head point blank uh, is, is a serious situation. Um, so again, it is on to you to perform safely. So communicating with them, making sure they're not going to run into your shot. If, uh, if you do have a teammate that keeps running and diving, pull your shots, do not fire. Um, just don't, don't do that. <laughs> please, please, please do not do that. Um, if you are in a situation where there is, there's a melee fight happening and there's a lot of movement, um, don't shoot into that. Um, you will not have control over where that shot is because they are in constant movement. Um, you, you could end up just pegging your own teammate instead. Um, or having those situations where the arrow gets batted out of the air, which again, we've gone over the dangers of that. So, um, yeah, no bueno. <laughs> um, yeah. So also, right. Um, knowing what enchantments are good for you. Uh, pro mag is fantastic. Um, pro projectile, um, just, if you have no armor, right, getting magic armor, um, that's all, that's all good stuff where it has to do with, again, communicating with your teammates, you, um, knowing what they have, what, um, what works good for your play style, um, right, uh, personal preference sorts of things, um, then also, uh, pro tip is understand your opponents know the different classes you're going up against, right? Um, if you're going up against a monk, you need to know that they can, right? They have the, the potential of being able to block your arrows with their weapon or their hands. Um, there's, right, understanding how ancestral armor works, how hardened works. Um, just knowing what you're going up against, um, right, the bard songs, things like that. Um, knowing how the, the armor interactions work with your arrows, um, how much damage it does, how, right, if you're going up against somebody with four points of armor and you shoot them, you've only taken off one point, um, right? If you have somebody that you're shooting with three points of armor, one shot will take off all of the armor but they're not dead. You have to hit them an additional time to kill them. Um, and again, that's if you're shooting them in, um, in a kill spot. Um, random also uh, strategic thing with armor. Again, if you're able to wear two points full, full body, do it, do it, do it. Um, but block with different parts of your body. Um, don't always block with the same thing because you'll blow through that armor spot. You can actually block with everything else. Um, I was I was in a fight once where uh, like most of my armor was was gone, but my legs um, were still uh, kitted up, and 
someone takes a shot and I'm trying not to like um, get bullied out of the shot. So I just lifted my leg and I, I took the shot to my shin, right? Just um, if you're fighting somebody, right? Um, and you know you're just getting hit a lot like this, right? Lock up with the other arm, right? If you are having two points in every section, right? Use the different parts of your body to block um, when you can't dodge out of those positions. Um, use what you got. <laughs> use what you got. Um, okay, so there's some more questions. Uh, sniper. Sniper is the bane of our existence because it's, um, it's something that is appealing and alluring and then you read how it works and then you're like, oh, gross. <laughs> um, so quickly, how, how it works is, um, uh, okay, let's see if I can explain this. Oh, uh, my face arrows on the other side of the apartment. <laughs> Um, we're LARPers, we have an imagination, we're going to pretend that this is a phase arrow, so bear with me here. So, you have one shot of all of these, just the one. Um, after you shoot these, um, every time you go to shoot another kind of these, you have to do the, um, the charging camp. You have to do the charging cat three times. Uh, hey, look at that phase arrow. Oh, magic. <laughs> Here we go. Whoop. Right, so um, you now you can have an unlimited amount of any types of these. Um, the all. Oh, so let's say I shoot this one. Oof, it's gone. Um, If I want to then pull out my quiver, another one of these, and shoot it, I cannot instantly just shoot it. I now must go, I knock my, or like, out of battle, I pause for us to take some time to cut the breath, or turn me on, leave bar to aim my dark star. I have to do it three times before I can take the shot. And then I have to go phase arrow. Uh, it takes so long. Um, right, so I, let's say I shoot this one, I shoot this one, then I want to shoot another one of these, I have to charge it, then I shoot this one, but I want to shoot this one again, so I have to charge this one again, um, I want to shoot another one of these, I have to charge that one again, so it's like, all these are like once per life, and then um, any time you want to shoot another one of those types, you have to do the charge. Um, you also cannot use normal arrows while doing sniper. So that's a huge, huge thing. Yeah, you have an unlimited thing of this, but you get suppressed, you can't shoot anything. You have no normal arrows to then switch up and use. Um, so it's, you can gas yourself by just having to constantly be charging. Um, it's exhausting. It, um, it takes a lot out of you and it takes a lot of time. Now, the trick to it, um, the hack is to have a, a battery barred with you um, so that you can uh, charge them up very quickly. Now, if something happens to your bard, then you're stuck all of a sudden now doing these all over again for a really long time. So, um, but, so basically, how these are, why these um, are set up this way um, is like for for things like keep, like gigantic battles, um, things where you're like up in a archer tower where you're not going to be coming down and getting your arrows, right? Like you have like a bucket of them up there with you and you're just, you know, you're going to be up there for several hours. You're not going anywhere. You're not going to do your reload. You're going to be just sitting up there. Um, that's, um, that's why, where it's like you can't go and collect them. So that's why you're allowed an unlimited amount of them. But there is a heavy cost, right? Um, which is having to charge them um, and then not being able to use normal arrows. So it's a situational thing for sure um, and can be super OP if you've got the battery barred to use. Um, 
But again, suppression is going to be a huge danger. But if you can get, you know, Pearl Mag, um, that's helpful. Um, uh, it's messy. <laughs> Just messy. Um, do, do, do. It's gonna go. Uh, personal opinion on which is the best chest armor. Okay. Um, oof, okay. Again, this is a personal preference thing. It's dependent. Um, the two types that I use is, uh, either, um, chainmail or, um, it's like, uh, it's a gambeson with a leather top. Um, so it's like, it's, it's leather armor and a gambeson that's sewn together. Um, so it's, uh, it is leather armor with a gambeson to bump it up to the, um, to the two points. Um, yeah, so it's, it's super, super, super dependent on the person. Um, some folks can handle more weight. Some folks can't, um, right. Uh, heavy gauge aluminum, um, is really good because it's a lot lighter than steel. Um, also for like heat and stuff, it's more, you know, it breathes better than having, um, some sort of gamson thing that can like, uh, do sort of that oven bake thing, especially like, especially if you have leather. <laughs> On top of that gambus and you're just not breathing at all in there. Um, so it's really good in the winter though. Um, and it's super light. So that's, that's the, the plus to it. So, um, I have, I have multiple sets of armor for, uh, different weather conditions and how I'm physically feeling. Cause I, um, I do have medical issues that I have to address, um, while playing. So, um, it becomes a dependent thing on uh, my ability to control my body temperature and um, how I'm feeling physically, how much weight I can handle on my body. Because um, sometimes I, I cannot even handle, uh, you know, the heavy gauge aluminum um, chain is sometimes too much for me to, to keep up. Um, so it's, it's dependent for me for sure. Um, but there, there's, there's a lot of folks with health concerns that play Archer, um, because it's a good, it's a good class to play for that. Um, you can keep out of melee range a lot. Um, you can also do, um, pro tip, <laughs> uh, if you're having a bad, um, pain day, um, and you're struggling and, uh, you, you really just don't want to take those hits, you can call dead, um, if somebody gets like within 20 of you, right? You can call dead. Don't even have that interaction, um, where they're going to hit you, right? Uh, especially if you know you're, you're not up for, you know, um, for a melee fight and, or especially like if, if you're not even going to be, if you have no sidearm, if you're not, um, prepped to be able to go into a melee combat situation, um, yeah, they get within 20 of you, you can just call dead, um, prevent that hit which is going to, you know, um, blow through your spins. <laughs> um, so just health stuff. Um, whoop. Okay. Um, question leading the shot on a rugging target. Um, a little confused on the wording, but, um, basically like with, with the running shots, right. You know, I talked about this earlier. Um, you're shooting for where they're going, not where they are. Um, so that there ends up being that sort of conversion thing, right. Um, where they, they meet at a point again, um, you do instinctual shooting for that. Your brain does auto target um, has an auto targeting mechanism inside of it. If you overthink it, you disengage it. But if you, if you just let it do its natural thing, like when somebody tosses you the ball and you catch it, right. Um, 
that that running shot ends up being the same sort of thing. You you loose the arrow um, to where they are going, not where they are. Because again, you shoot where they are, they're already gone by the time it reaches them. So that um, sniper sucks. Yep. <laughs> um, sorry, I just I'm, I'm just have so much. I'm just a huge hater for for sniper. I'm just not happy with it. <laughs> Um, but what if you team up with a barb? Again, right, I mentioned that before. Um, what makes it um, actually playable is getting the, bu the battery barred, right? Um, so, yeah, that's really the only time that um, I can advocate it is when you have a battery barred. But also, um, that bard has to be okay with basically not playing the game. <laughs> You have to be okay with just being the person that keeps on getting your stuff charged for you. Um, they they can't leave you. Like, they have to be with you to make sure that they keep, you know, going through your stuff. Because uh, if they, um, they bamf off, all of a sudden, you're stuck charging forever. So, if somebody's willing to do it, you know, bless them. <laughs> bless them and do it. Um... Okay, um, two of our members up here have been working on new archetypes. They come up with one for Archer they call Specialist. Specialist allows the Archer to take as many of any one specialty arrow as they want at the cost of that being the only arrow type they have, no other specialty arrows, and no regular arrows. What do you think of that? Hmm. Um. That could either be really good or really broken, depending. Um. Yes, depending. Um, <laughs> it also it also depends on the archer too, right? Um, if you if you have archers that are like super on point and and they land almost all of their shots and they shoot just one after another, and uh, if they have all phase arrows or uh, you know all pinning or something. Um, they can do a lot of damage. <laughs> um, if you if you have folks that um, perhaps aren't um, aren't at that level, then um, it ends up being more balanced because of how often the shots are hitting. Um, right? If it's a toss up, um, then it's more spread out, and that can be a little bit better. But um, yeah, I, I'd say it's, it's very, very dependent on, um, on their skill level. Um, and also what else is on the field, right? If there's counters to it. Um, really depending on the other classes that are there, um, it could be super, super broken. Um, or it could be totally useless, right? Um, they could just be like, no, you're just suppressed. No, you're suppressed. You're suppressed. And you know, basically box them out and not let them, um, shoot anything at all. So, um, it's, it's very, 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 uh, dependent on, um, depends on the skill level, depends on, um, the counters of the opposition. So, toss up. It's a toss up. Um, for other questions. Okay, um, what would be a, sorry, that would be a, that would be to replace Sniper, yeah. Um, again, right, just, it's dependent, it's super, super dependent on things. Um, a lot of a lot of what we do could be super super broken or 
super useless. Um, there's lots of variables. Um, I would say play test it, play around, see different combinations. Um, there is no harm in trying and um, just see if you can break it, you know? Um, try it out, test it, and, and see if you can break it. Um, but yeah, play test, try stuff, always try stuff. So, um, are there any more questions? Uh, just a side note, um, there is a 20 second delay. So um, it does take 20 seconds from when you type it to when I see it. Um, there is nothing else. And we can call it a night. Um, just, uh, as in my other classes, I'm going to do the silly dance to wait for questions in case. For Rajavia and Jazz Hands. Um, LP says hi. Hi, Mun. <laughs> LP is a bunny <laughs> on the other side of the house. Um, okay. Um, okay, so I think that's about it. Um, really appreciate y'all coming. Um, thank you for everyone that is here. And uh, thank you to anyone in the future that watches this. Um, thank you for watching. <laughs> um, if you have any questions at any point, um, please feel free to, uh, to message me on Facebook or Discord. Um, again, Admiral Ann Cash, Amy Salvador. Um, yeah, so that's it for me. Thank you for coming to uh, Paragon Archer AMA and lecture. Um, thank you. Um, and stuff here just a side note uh stay safe and uh remember to take care of each other <laughs>